So today I want to talk to you about something called Open Plotter. We've got a, a little space on our boat, um, as you can see here, where I'd like to put a screen. Um, really, I'd like a, a full-blown chart plotter there, but um, money's not quite ready and I'm not, the project's not quite ready for that. I'd, I'd like to replace quite a few of the electronics actually on the boat, but in the meantime, I've got a bit of time on my hands. We're in lockdown and I thought I'd have a little bit of a play with this application called Open Plotter. And as you can see, um, it's got quite a few different features. Um, it's got an inbuilt chart plotter, which you can load uh, charts from around the world in. You can produce your own dashboards. You can get information from your boat, whether it's on the NMEA um, various versions, whether that's uh, the earlier one or the, the 2000, which I think is a little bit more popular now. Um, and it turns it into this format, uh, this marine data exchange format with, with an application called Signal K, which is, which is really quite powerful because you can then feed that information into other things. You can also receive um, data from sensors, which is something that, that I've had a go at doing with it. Um, but then, like I say, you can then output that data onto uh, NME K, uh, NMEA 2000 networks. So it's got quite a lot in it. There's also people that have built autopilots, and it's the same with all of this. When you start reading and digging in a little bit more, you can actually do whatever you want with it. Um, but I've kept mine quite simple. So essentially, you have got information here on how to, to sort of set it up. You've got downloads, and you've got various support and sources of information that you can go and read further. But basically, it's um, an application that will run on most uh, PCs. Um, it's Linux-based. Um, but you can get it from Open Marine here, and I'm actually going to run mine on a Raspberry Pi, which is a very small um, single board computer the, that takes a, an SD card, a power supply, and then a standard keyboard, a mouse, and a display. So it's not an overcomplicated setup, and most people will have some of those components at home. The, the little board itself, they're about £35. Um, you can get started quite quickly with a phone charger. Um, to, to provide power to it and like I say you just need an SD card really which again is a few pounds and you're, you're basically up and running. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a go um, and see how far I got. Okay so here's my um, Raspberry Pi um, it's in this little case here we've just got power going to it um, and we can ignore all the other bits at the side. This this is essentially a power supply that I've made for when it's on the boat but we, we don't need to worry about that now and this at the back here is connected to some um, temperature sensors and things but essentially you can add all this if you wanted to do that you don't have to do any of that to get up and running you just need the Raspberry Pi power cable and then you connect as you do with everything else in the, the computing world you know USB in the side for your um, keyboard and your mouse um, and the SD cards just in the back there so we'll cut across now to the application and getting everything installed so from the website then um, scroll down to the to the download section here and to get started I went for the basic one because that includes everything including the operating system you don't have to configure ev anything at all all the applications are already there um, and they're they're all ready to go basically so it's straight out of the box um, running on um, the Raspberry Pi OS so again something else that you don't even have to consider it it, it should just work straight out of the box so download that um, and then there is a little installation guide um, down here if you follow that that takes you to this um, and you can download um, the actual installation tool to put that um, file onto your SD card so plug that into your computer follow the steps here and it'll unpack um, the file onto the SD card once you've done that SD card into the Raspberry Pi plug your power in connect up your keyboard, your mouse and your display and wait for it to start up. Okay so when your Raspberry Pi starts up um, you'll be presented with probably this little screen here that's just about to load that just runs through a few checks to make sure everything's um, up and running and, and everything's okay. Um, it might look slightly different to this, I've just customised my colours a little bit to, to suit what I wanted but essentially um, that's where you end up. If you go to the start menu here uh, and you click open plotter you'll see open CPN so that's the chart plotter software um, you could just stop there that that could be enough you can put your charts in that you can you can obviously buy charts for it for the UK it doesn't really they don't really have a set of um, charts but 
um, over in America they do, and a, and a few other places have got downloadable charts. But for ourselves, we we have to pay for ours. Um, so you can you can get a copy of um, your region, and you can put it on, and essentially you've got um, a very cheap chart plotter. The the as I say, the basic what you get out of the box for us, we just get the shape of the UK. You don't really get anything more than that. But um, if you go into the settings and you go to charts, um, you've got various options here of, of adding charts if you've already bought them um, and they're in um, one of the supported formats, which again, you can find out all that sort of information in the the um, help files. Um, or you can go through and put some plugins, which is what I did. I, I downloaded one of the plugins, went to a website, paid £20 and it basically gave me my charts for the UK. Really simple. Um, I basically downloaded this plugin here and I installed my chart pack um, and I've got that for a year now so that gives me sort of detailed charts of the UK and if I zoom in um, you see that's the normal view you get but now it's actually loading into the charts um, and you can see quite detailed information so as I say out the box with that software you've basically got a chart plotter but it's got a number of other features and, and one of those as, as we mentioned in the opening part of the video is the fact that it can take data from both instruments so that's either the older NME format or the new 2k format um, and depending on what you want to do with it you could then get your GPS data for example onto this and it will plot the boat on the on the chart as you would expect but you can also get other information on there so you can start receiving depth data, wind data um, and then you can feed that into other applications and start making some dashboards. So this is Signal K and what this does is this receives data from those networked devices, instruments, sensors, all sorts of different stuff and it converts it into a format that then you can export so you can actually go from an older um, enemy format to a newer format and use this as kind of a bridge between the two um, or you can go backwards the other way and start outputting data to support older instruments or you can just use it as a collector which is basically what I'm doing um, and um, outputting that into some dashboard so there's a couple of things that I want to monitor I'd like to monitor my batteries a little bit better so I, I bought a um, Victron smart shunt um, and that again has got a phone app but I don't want to sit on the phone looking at the data all the time. I'd rather have it in that space on the boat um, and be able to sort of look at what the trend of the batteries has been, how much power I've used, um, essentially what sort of charging I need to do to bring them back up to normal um, or to fully charged. Um, and um, I also want to build um, a dashboard to get some of my uh, boat instruments inside rather than being out on the back having to go to the back to look at, at wind data and things like that I'd, I'd, it'd be nice to sit inside in the warmth and look at it there and, and plan a few routes and things so that's essentially what I want to do with it so how do you get started with signal k so to start the application um, click up in the top left hand corner here go to open plotter and then signal k um, you can do it that way or you can click on the icon here and when this starts up, obviously there's no data or, or any connections made to, to any of the devices you've got. So if you want to start getting information from your boat systems into Signal K, you're going to have to set that up. So there's, there's hardware out there that you can buy, USB connectors to um, N2K, for example, or um, there's guides on the internet how to build some of that yourself. So, you, so just depending on what you want to do and what information you want to receive into that, that's that's one route that you can go. You could also um, keep this completely on its own and buy um, a USB GPS, for example, um, or sensors and things um, and, and do it that way. So I'll just show you some of the things that I've done with mine so far um, and then that'll give you a bit of an understanding of, of what it's actually doing. So this is the main dashboard and this shows any of the connections that you've already made. Um, on the left hand side here you've got web apps. So it comes with a predefined set of instrument panels which you can then tailor to your requirements. So this is this is quite a good one. It's a, just a dead simple um, web page that um, you can configure in the corner here and you can put various different um, widgets onto this to show um, whatever data that you're currently capturing. 
Um, this is also a very good uh, one and this is also pre-installed with the package and that, that's the one that I've actually done quite a bit of work in and um, which I'll show in a minute but again it's another dashboard tool that you can use to, to display that data and again you've got um, links to other things so you can create databases where you can store that data and then analyse it later. So if you go to data browser, that actually shows you what data is coming in to the to the system at any one point. So it's just a um, a sort of a snapshot in time. And that's that's another important thing to mention about Signal K is that that is all it is. It doesn't store any of this. It's not writing any of this to a database, for example. It's purely just a snapshot, and that's then displayed on those dashboards. If you want to sort of archive that um, and and look at historical data then you're going to have to integrate it into one of the databases and do it that way. In the App Store, you can get a number of plugins. I've got a couple of updates, but in the App Store, um, you can get a number of plugins, um, depending on what you want to do. And again, you just have to look down the list here. And this is all pre-written software that, that people are constantly contributing towards. And then you can decide what you want to do and, and download some of this um, if it fits some of your requirements, or you could attempt to write your own. And then you've got another option here around server configuration. So again, and then the settings here um, for the vessel name, the type of vessel, um, dimensions, beam, things like that. So you can pre-configure that. And then you've got data connections. So this is actually what the um, Signal K application is going to talk to. And for me, I've got CTalk. Um, so one of the little um, boxes that you saw in the video, I've built a CTalk interface Again, following some guides on the internet, um, and as soon as I can get to the boat, I can tell you whether that will work or not. But essentially, that I'll receive the wind data, GPS data, everything that's currently on my CTOR network depth, um, and feed it into here. So I've got all of that, and then I can log it and do a few other bits and bobs with it. Um, I'm also experimenting with some of these sensors. Again, if you read some of the documentation, that will tell you what to do there, and I might do another video showing some of that, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. So yeah, so that's that's the thing from this this VED one. That's the interface to the Victron. So again, um, if we go back to the App Store, um, there was a pre somebody had already written the app for that. So that there it is, Victron serial to USB. So I bought the Victron cable. Um, I can then just plug that into the Raspberry Pi. I download that bit of software, and that'll then understand the language that's coming out of that smart shunt that's got my battery information on via that USB cable straight into there and, and it's it's all pre-done and ready to go. So there's a lot of stuff already out there that you can utilise um, before having to sort of reinvent the wheel. So how do you get your data into here? So there are a number of ways of doing that. And if you go back to the open plotter, so you've got various methods. So you've got the GPIO pins, which are the pins on the Raspberry Pi. You've also got things like serial connections so we're going to the serial connections um, one that will hopefully show you where the USB cable is plugged in that's going to eventually talk to the batteries um, or to the Victron kit. Let's give that a second to load. And then I'll go into one of the dashboards and show you how to configure some of the dashboards that are that are already in there. OK, so this here is that device that, that's plugged in. Obviously, there's no detection at the end because unfortunately we're miles away from the boat. Um, but again, this is. Um, where we've connected that and again it's just as simple as plugging that device in and, and linking the two together which it, it, it basically guides you through um, so you add to signal k you tell it what it's what data that is going to present in the actual application so we, i can't show you that i don't think but if you go into the data browser i might be able to just show another example so for instance these these sensors that are picked up um, I just had to tell it what I wanted that to be coded as. So the sensor was detected, as you can see here. Um, it then gives you a value. This is actually humidity. So at the moment, that's room humidity. So it asks me then, what would I like that data to be, be presented at? And at the moment, I've selected environment, inside, and then relative humidity. Same with the temperature and the pressure. And then some of the other sensors I've got, for example, this one here, I've, I've decided to call that one outside temperature. Um, but again, you can, for example, this one, exhaust temperature. So those two sensors are exactly the same. It's just two separate ones. Um, but I can then define that. And then later on, when we go to build a dashboard, that's where we can see that information. 
So we're going to Kip. So you can do this through the web pages button or you can create yourself a, um, a quick shortcut. So out the box in Kip, you're presented with this dashboard here and, and this will load some predefined data um, on a server so you can see all of this working. But essentially you've got depth, speed, um, you've got a wind instrument with a compass into it and then you've got some logging that happens down here. If you want to, to reconfigure any of this, you go down to the bottom right, click on these three little icons, up to configuration and you edit the layout. So once you go into edit mode, you can resize, you can change what's displayed and you can also select where that data is coming from. So if we go into the settings for this one, you'll see that it's predefined with some um, information. So in the paths, this is when we refer back to um, signal K and we can see here it's taking it from self navigation course over ground true. So at the moment that's not a valid link for me because I don't have any of that information coming in so it's going to complain about that but obviously as that data and those fields get populated we can then call on that. So if I go forwards to a, a dashboard that I've had a go at creating which is this one here um, so at the top here, I, I went through and I selected, I, I chose the layout first. So with each one of these, I can tell it how I want that to look. So I can split it either horizontally or vertically. Um, I then, once that's done, I then get to choose what I want to, to display in that, that space, whether it's a gauge or it's a, a vertical gauge, um, or it's a numerical value, or it's a piece of text. Um, I, I can pick whatever I want from that point. So if I click here, I've used a, a radial gauge, um, but there are other options there. If I go into settings, um, so again, this is what it's going to display. These are the how much data I'm going to see, the integers and the number of decimal places, the maximum value on the gauge. So I know that this particular one's a percentage have gone from 0 to 100%. I then pick a path. So that's my path that we saw from the other screen. Um, and then this is where the data is actually coming from. And again, you can get this to, to change the format of the data and actually Kip's very clever and it will convert it. So the temperature sensors, for example, are all in Kelvin and this will automatically convert that to Celsius. And then you've got a number of settings that you can change around um, how it's measuring it and, and some colors. So again, so I've just done that for each one of these. We've got inside temperature, outside temperature, um, radiator or um, exhaust temperature at the moment. But actually just picking it up off the radiator, humidity and pressure. Um, and then the information at the bottom, this is actually pulling in a website. So again, uh, one of those settings is you can take a website into here. And this is from Grafana. So this is historical data that I was talking about before where this data has been put into a database and then we're calling that database back. Um, to display here and again we can we can roll back so that's got a lot more options where the data at the top is, is live it's what it's actually seen now. I've also created a dashboard for my batteries so again start a house, house um, amps, um, house uh, charge so how fully charged the batteries are, time remaining and amps consumed so at the moment this is just taking um, any data that I could get into it um, and I think this is actually humidity, but I'll, I'll change all the fields. And again, this is all fake. Um, but again, I'll change the, the fields as we get, as we can go back to the boat um, and we start getting those links and integrations sorted. So it's a really powerful tool. It's really easy to configure. And once you've had a bit of a play with it, there's loads, it sparks just loads of ideas. You can do a number of different things with it and you just keep developing it really as you go on. So if we come back to um, Signal K, if we go to server and then to plugins, one of the plugins that I configured is this, this Influx DB writer. So I'm writing that data into a database um, and I can configure what information I want to send. And so I don't have to send everything. I can send parts uh, of, of the data into the database. So you can see at the bottom here, the pieces of data that I'm actually sending and what the tag is. The beauty of this is you can then use an application called Grafana. So Grafana is a visualization tool 
um, it uses the data that's in that database um, to visualize that data. And again, you can create graphs, um, you can create gauges, various bits and bobs. Again, it's very easy to configure. Um, so once this is linked up, and the way you do that is, is in the data sources section. So on the left hand side, go to data sources. You add the data source by using the add data source button here. That then gets you access to your database. And then what you need to do then is you then need to start creating a dashboard. So if we go to dashboards. I've already created some, so I'll show you these. So essentially to create a dashboard, you click here and that adds one of these widgets into the um, panel. Um, and then what you can do then is you can configure that to however you want it to look. So if we click edit on this one, Here you can see the influx database that it's querying. It's then picking up that same string that we've seen right the way through, right the way from um, Signal K, um, environment inside temperature. It's then, for me, it's having to do a calculation. So as Kip um, automatically did the Kelvin to Celsius configuration, this won't, so I've had to minus that amount off. And essentially then that gives me this data here and it's like with Excel or any of any product like that. You can then configure how you want this to look, the colours, um, the legends, the information on the left hand side, all of that stuff. It's entirely up to you what you want to do with it. But the nice thing is, is when you select a piece of data in this, so if I select this time frame here, it will select it across all the graphs. And then it redraws each graph to show me that piece of data. So there was something that I wanted to have a look at. Well, why has that happened? Again, I can start to say, oh, this was the outside temperature trend. This is the inside temperature trend. I mean, this could be any data you want. This is the pressure. And um, so you could look at, I suppose, pressure to wind, um, loads of different things. But again, you can create whatever you want. You can color code this. You can create thresholds here. So if you're looking... Um, or if you're monitoring something like I've done with the electrical dashboard, which is very similar to the one in KIP. You can put thresholds onto this to then see when batteries are getting low um, or potentially being overcharged. Again, this is not real data. It's just to make it look um, like it is um, but you can put thresholds into that um, you can color code everything and you can do a number of bits and bobs with the gauges and the graphs